Hi, it's JJ. And Michelle. Welcome to an instructional video for movie dishes. Today, we're going to make, and by we I mean Michelle, uh, we're going to make risotto. Now, I don't think I'd ever had risotto until I started dating you. Really? You brought risotto into my life. As well as so many other wonderful things. Until you came along, it was just rice. But it's so much more than rice. However, there's a great backstory you shared with me. What's the? Tell me a story, Michelle, <laughs> okay. about the history of risotto. Okay, risotto is kind of like lobster. In that, in the olden days, lobster was not something fancy that was really expensive and pinkies up. By the olden days, do you mean like when we were kids? No, I mean like way, the way back. 1800s. 1800s. When I was here. Yeah, it was fed to prisoners. Okay, then. all right. Okay. Risotto is kind of the same thing. It has since become a little fancy Pinkies pinkies up, up mm -hmm. um, made in all the finest restaurants in our house. Um, but it used to be that the slaves would take like two or three kernels of rice at a time and hide it in their pockets and their clothes and at night take it back to the slave quarters and everyone that was a cook as a slave would take the rice and put it in a communal bowl. Okay. And when they got enough stored away rice, they would make a huge pot of risotto okay. and share it amongst everyone. So it wasn't necessarily a fancy, you know, high-end meal. It was something eaten by the slaves as kind of like a fill-your-belly type a, a staple. Hearty, a hearty rice dish. Yep, exactly. And it's kind of a, a blank canvas, if you will, because we've experimented a lot with risotto. Mm -hmm. A lot of those fine restaurants, Pinky's Up, that you talk about, have a couple of standard risotto dishes, but they don't go too far out there. We've taken the idea of soups and other meals and been like, hey, we can make a risotto out of that. Mm -hmm. We make a cow soy risotto, and one day we were at the farmer's market down at Wave, the indoor winter farmer's market. When we were still allowed to leave the house and walk amongst yeah, each other. no social distancing and things like that. But we ran into a vendor there, Leaf and Stone Apothecary. Mm -hmm. um, and the cow soy risotto that we make, we came across this golden milk powder, which has some really terrific notes to it. Well, it's like a, it made me think of a curry. Basically what they did with it was they mixed it with coconut milk and made a hot beverage like a chai like a chai and it was delicious but it made me feel like I was drinking liquid curry which made me really happy right um but then I thought well you know what I use coconut milk and the cow soy risotto so if I just take this and mix this in with the coconut milk then I could have like a curry broth to make risotto with and so I put like I don't know four or five tablespoons of this in the coconut milk and it did just that. It made like a delicious oh, curry so broth. And then I made risotto with that as my liquid instead of chicken broth or vegetable broth or water. And we put some shrimp in it and some snow peas or sugar peas. Uh, it had sort of this, this Thai Asian feel to it. Mm -hmm. But instead of just plain old coconut milk, we had this golden milk and it really took it to a different place. So it was very good. So um, what we're going to make tonight uh, is not that because we don't have all the ingredients. But we do have ingredients to make a risotto. And I'm going to say it. We didn't plan this out. But I'm gonna, mm -hmm. we're going to make this, this. We usually make this risotto around Thanksgiving. Uh, and around Thanksgiving, we get visited by uh, our family member, uh, Dr. Alyssa Baker, who is in our thoughts and prayers right now because she is on the front lines of the COVID-19 um, pandemic in New York City. And Thanksgiving always reminds us of her because she always comes to us for Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. That's her holiday with That's us. That's her holiday with us every year. So this is for you, Alyssa. We're going to make a sage and sausage pumpkin risotto. Mm -hmm. uh, and Michelle's going to do the cooking. I'm going to do the filming. Easy to follow step by step. The kids are at home with you. You can even get them involved in this. Absolutely. Risotto is not difficult. It requires I patience. They, they brainwash all of us to think that it was a really difficult dish to make. And it's not. It does require a little patience, and it's not something you can rush. And so then for me, the way I cut an onion is I just slice it like that, 
so that it's flat on the cutting board and I'm just cutting right through to the cutting board. So I'm not trying to do any sort of fancy, you know, cut halfway and it just terrifies me. So anyway, if I just cut like this after I've sliced it one way, I just have perfect little dices and I didn't cut my fingers off. And when I get to this point, I always just kind of flop it down on the side. So again, I'm not dealing with something that's moving around a lot. And then into the frying pan with some olive oil. And then I'm gonna pick up the onion and drop it in the pan. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna cook the onions down until they're not quite translucent. It's a little sooner than what you normally do when you're cooking onions all the way down. But when they're about at this point, they still have a little bit of bounce back to them. And they look like they're pretty well browned nicely. You're then going to add your rice to the onions. It's important that you use a Boreo rice when you make risotto. You can make it with other things. It's just not going to give you the same texture that you're looking for. Um, so if you want really traditional risotto, you want to use a Boreo rice. Um, little tip, we bought this brand once. It's really expensive. Kroger has their own Boreo rice that comes in a bag that's like, mm, I don't know, three times cheaper. So I just refill this container with the Kroger Boreo rice. Shh, don't tell. Okay, so it's just me and JJ eating tonight. So I'm just going to use a cup of rice. So I'm going to take it out and I'm going to pour it in the hot pan with the onions. And then I'm going to toast it. So I'm just going to stir it around with the onions until the aborio gets just slightly toasty color. Not like, you know, number five toast that you have to scrape the burnt stuff off. Just like, you know, on those Facebook things with which toast are you? Just kind of like a two, maybe a one and a half. You're just gonna wanna toast it to kind of open up. Basically what it does is it softens it just a little bit and kind of opens up the um, texture of the rice so that it absorbs the liquid. Okay, to me that smells about right. And it's starting to look a little kind of brownish. It's blending in a little bit more with the onions than when we first put it in. So the next step is, the first thing you always want to do is add a little bit of alcohol. Just any old white wine will do. Um, we have two buck chuck Pinot Grigio. So you're going to pour a little bit of that in, probably about a half a cup, or sorry, about a quarter of a cup. Yeah, and that looks like a quarter of a cup. And you're gonna stir it up. Basically, this just, the alcohol in it evaporates, and so you're not actually consuming alcohol. But this is just going to kind of bring everything together and make it ready to start absorbing the liquid. Okay, so when all of the wine is gone, you're gonna put your first batch of liquid in. What I learned to do a long time ago is to add it a half a cup at a time. And this ladle that I have actually holds a half a cup of liquid. So I just pour that in and then stir. And at this point, you're gonna to wanna to turn the temperature down to about medium, maybe medium low. I seem to be cooking the onions a little bit fast because I'm talking and doing this a little slower than usual. And when that round of liquid evaporates, you put the next one in. And you're gonna stir it. And you're gonna keep doing this until eventually the liquid isn't gonna evaporate so fast. So then you can take a few minutes to step away and do something else. But when you first start, you really have to just keep at it so that it doesn't burn. You see as you're adding more liquid it's taking a little bit longer to evaporate so as you can see we've got a nice creamy
texture of risotto. It has a little bit of liquid still in it. And we, I'd say it took probably about 20, 25 minutes to add liquid and stir, add liquid and stir. Um, this is a great place where we said, you know, if you had kids at home, this would be a good thing to do with your kids. I do this with my young nephews whenever they're here and we make risotto because they love the stirring part. So, you know, they're five and seven, so we pull up a step stool and they stand here and I'll add the hot liquid and they'll just stir. And this arm will get tired and then they'll switch to this arm and then they'll be like, oh, Michelle. And then the other one will come, oh, I'll take over. And so I basically never have to stir. Um, so it's a fun thing to do if you have kids at home. Okay, so now we've got the onions and the risotto and the liquid and it's cooked down to be just al dente where it's not mushy and like paste the uh, rice still has a little bit of a chew if you notice the rice kernels are a little bit bigger you get that from the aborio so it kind of holds its firmness a little bit better and it's just a different grain of rice i am just using a can of pumpkin it's 100% pure pumpkin. It's not the pumpkin pie filling. Big difference. Don't accidentally use the pumpkin pie filling. Use the 100% pure pumpkin. I'm just going to kind of eyeball it. I take it out, drop it in. Um, I would say you probably want to use about half a cup, maybe a little bit more. If you're making the whole pot of risotto with a cup and a half, you can probably just put the whole can in. Again, I just used a cup of risotto, so it's going to be a little smaller. So I'm going to mix in the pumpkin. I'm just going to get that fun, traditional fall orange color. And then I'm going to add some fresh sage. Now my fresh sage looks like this right now because it's actually frozen from summertime. So uh, we grew some sage and so I had extra. And what I did was I took the leaves off and I put them in this handy dandy little Pampered Chef container. And this is called like an herb freezer, I think. Herb preserver, I don't know, something about herbs and freezing. Um, and I put the fresh leaves down inside and then I filled it with water. You can pack as many leaves or as few leaves as you want in there. Then I filled it with water, did the whole tray, put the lid on, put it in the freezer. After it was frozen solid after a few days, I left it in there and forgot actually. Um, but then I went in and it's silicone so you can just pop the little containers of frozen herbs out and I put them in a Ziploc bag and label it and toss it back in the freezer. We did that with basil because we had a bumper crop of basil and I think I ended up with, I don't know, like 200 little containers of little round dots of basil. I did some of those in water and some of them in olive oil depending on what I was using it for. So anyway, so now we have some fresh sage. Well, we had it in the middle of the winter. You can get sage at the grocery store now, but obviously we couldn't go to the grocery store so we luckily had some sage in the freezer. So anyway, I'm just going to chop it up a little. The only difference really is that the texture is different because it was frozen. So it's a little uh, sticky, wonky. Um, but the flavor is still going to be the same. It's just not going to have that pretty bright green color that sage has. The thing you're going to do is you're going to add your sausage in. See, I can just pick it up by the little napkin, dump it in. There's no grease because it all stayed the napkin and stir that up you're going to let it simmer on the stove for just a little bit to reheat the sausage but the that won't take long at all i'd say like maybe a minute two okay so we've got the risotto in the plates i have a lot of pasta bowls um that I love using. So for me, that's a great place for the risotto. I'm gonna grate some fresh uh, Parmesan on the top. And yes, I know I'm using my microplaner. It's because the cheese grater is in the dishwasher. Is that enough for you, honey? Great. Okay. Mm. 
And that is all we have to do. Now we just get to dig in.